Okay, so we're back with the Real Deal Tirana. It's time to get cutting. Um, I've got this bonnet out of our storage. Now, the thing with this uh, little car, it's 50 plus years old, and the downside is there's no reproduction bonnets for this car. So, I've got a second hand bonnet here. I've recently stripped it over the last couple of days. Um, if you come in and have a bit of a look, you can see there's a bit of rust, pitting rust, so which is bitting, bitten into the steel. Um, after I get the modification done of the whole cut where we're happy, I will send this bonnet off to get dipped, so it'll get chemically dipped, and it'll come back, hopefully, looking like a brand new bonnet. So, what my plan of attack is, is to try and measure up off this bonnet. So I'm gonna centralize this bonnet in the gap. Um, lucky enough, the actual bonnets are the same size. So I run a tape over them, they're, they're pretty close. So I'll use this bonnet as a bit of a gauge. Um, so we'll get it nice gaps. And then what I mean I'll use it as a gauge, I'm gonna measure off the actual bonnet. So I'm gonna use the bonnet to measure back to where we want to start with. But in saying that, the measurements, I'm not gonna cut straight on there. So we're gonna do probably a number of cuts and chip away because like I said, it wasn't that easy um, getting bonnets. Um, lucky enough, I have one. So I'll start measuring it up and we'll start cutting. All right, so there's the first piece of the puzzle uh, taking out. Um, as you can see, the rust. It's pretty severe in here, so we spoke about before getting the bonnet uh, dipped. And the advantage of that is it'll get up in all these joints um, because what you see here will 100% be up in the uh, in the frame as well. So that fits out. We'll keep measuring, keep trimming. Okay, I've decided I'm going to remove the majority of this brace. Uh, these braces from factory obviously are joined because we've cut the centre of it out, and you can probably see this here. That would be glue or like a velvet or some kind of material. What that normally does, that ties the bonnet together and it also stops the out of skin oil canning. So um, if it's not there, you can get a bit of vibration. I'm not too stressed with this build. As you can see, it's a bare metal car um, and it's got no interior. So noise is not a big, uh, big issue uh, for me. So I'm gonna throw the rest of them braces out. Um, it'll give me a bit more room. I'll sit the bonnet back on and then we'll do that, uh, that center cut. So. In a short story, these four pieces are going, as you can see, like I'm trying to explain, they're just doing that. So, because they're not tied together, they're, they're pretty much useless. So they're, they're going. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the bonnet sitting on there. Um, we removed the brace like we spoke about. We got really close. Um, this is literally how close we got to uh, not having to modify the outer skin. So if we really wanted to, I suppose, we probably could get that engine down a little bit more, uh, but I think it'd probably create a lot more uh, headaches than what it'd be worth. Um, the sump will be lower on the chassis rails. So I'm not real keen on ripping that out. So, um, and two, I do want that Ferrari um, logo hanging out. So. We'll uh, get it back off and we'll start cutting that hole piece by piece and we'll get that little red uh, logo hanging out in no time. Okay, so I've gone ahead and worked out a center line for the uh, the bonnet. So this big scribe that runs straight through with that lovely C on there, that's the center line of this, uh, this hood. So uh, what I've done is I've worked out a real tight cut, which is gonna be very, very snug on here, hopefully, um, where this dotted line is that goes around it. So for now, I'm just gonna do it square corners because I know that this is eventually going to get larger so I'll get that out we'll get this hood back off and we'll slip it straight back on so like I said that dotted line will be the first cut we uh, we make okay so we've got it uh, roughly sitting in place um, it's a good start. It is still touching on the back. The front's maybe just clean, the sides are touching. Um, don't stress about <laughs> scratching this red covers. I am gonna get them uh, recoded. I'm gonna actually gonna get the three covers color matched to the red wheelwood calipers. Um, looking at it at the moment, I think we're probably gonna be about 10, 15 mil bigger than that around. I kinda wanna get the appearance of that big cover. So 
I really hope we can get out to here somewhere without it looking too silly. So I'll do a bit more measuring up. Um, we'll get some cuts and we might start putting a radius in the corners now because if we go too far, there'll be no material to put a radius in. So it might slow down a little bit now doing the cuts. Okay, so we've taken our 10 mil either side, 10 mil for the back and five off the front. Um, I'm pretty happy with the front and the two sides. The back is a bit of a pain. Um, it's not that simple to work out that cut off a measurement. The issue we've got is the engine obviously tapers back with the drive line angle and that rock cover runs downhill. Um, also the bonnet is going forward and it's got a bulge. If everything was pretty square, we could just find a bit of a datum line at the front measure back, run a string line across the top of the guards, and we'd have our cut. Um, in that being said, I think I'm just gonna have to go 10 mil at a time, back on 10 mil at a time. Guessing, I'd love to just be able to make one cut and just cut 30 mil off it and be done. Um, but I don't wanna to have to weld stuff back into the bonnet. So I think I'll just go 10 mil at a time um, and we'll get there. So but at a guess, I'm thinking 30 mil. All right, so that is the final product. That is the cut. Um, it's not going to be any bigger, and it definitely going to be smaller, I was, otherwise we're welding bits into in place. So, um, I've used a little bit of offcuts here, just to set the bonnet, because I haven't got the hinges or the catch on it, but that's roughly what we're going to go for. Um, I'm pretty stoked, that's for, that's for sure, so it's very subtle. So this car's gone from one extreme to the other, it's gone from having to blow a hat higher than the roof, um, just to that little red strip, so pretty stoked with it, um, like I said. I've just chucked up black lines. I have some uh, some electrical tapes to get an idea what the black and the red's gonna tie in like. So that's done. The bonnet's uh, finished at this stage. I'll send it away and get it chemically dipped like we spoke about. And then when we get it back, we'll get it bolted up properly, catch it and gap it 100%. Um, and also we'll have to get it to look like the rest of the car. Um, so this car is obviously stripped back. Obviously a lot better than this. Um, but yeah, back to that, that, that standard there, and then it's clear coated, and then we scotch it to get that dull look. So this whole car's got clear, clear coated on it to stop it rusting, um, so we'll go for the same appearance. One thing I must touch on with the bonnet too is about gapping it and stuff. Some people might not know, the viewers in America, this car has got a weld on front, so there's zero adjustment in the doors and the guards. Um, little trainers, yeah, so from factory, they were welded on guards. And, uh, and doors, so there's the yeah, bugger all adjustment other than the bonnet hinges and the catch. So we're all good. Uh, time to get the bonnet off, send it away, and we'll tackle the next step. Okay, so we finally got the uh, adapter plate back for the laser cutters. Um, it is mild steel, so here at the rod shop when we do prototype work or, or early production runs, we do it out of steel. Um, now it's in a bridge port, which is a mechanical machine. Um, they're gonna plot it out, throw the holes in it, and then what we'll do is we'll probably send this plate down to the transmission guys and they can work out the spacing and stuff, the converter. So the good idea about steel, um, if it gets knocked around early, it won't bruise it. I think what we'll probably do is uh, the final piece we make a bit of uh, aluminium. Uh, but this will definitely uh, get it started. So this will allow to get the two together and, and get it in the car. So I'll let uh, the machine boys throw the pattern in it. Um, once we're done, we'll actually put it back into another machine, which we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, so the boys in the machine job have uh, got all the pattern in the sample plate. Um, we spoke about it be a stage two. This is the machine, so it is on the older side, might be the 70s or 80s. What it actually is, is a rotary surface grinder. So if you come in and have a quick look here, it's actually got a, a magnetic bed. So this will clamp the plate down like slow, so I should say. Um, it will come down, so it's got grinding stones, so it'll mill it nice and flat. So I'll probably let them get that in there, because uh, I'm not 100% sure how it works. Um, and we'll get that cutting and show you how it all goes together. Then once that's done, hopefully we can bolt to the back of the engine get the gearbox to it and we should be good to go back into the car.
Okay, so the boys in the machine shop uh, finished with the prototype of that. The boat's been ground. Um, we've got some dowels put into place. So now the next step is to get the uh, transmission and engine together. So what we're going to use uh, for the setup now is just a hollow power by case. So there's actually nothing in this. It's nice and light. This makes life a bit easier going in and out of the car. So um, we'll get these two together and we'll get it back in the car and just check some tunnel clearance to make sure we're happy with all that. And then probably once we've got all that done and we're happy, we'll probably send the engine with the adapter plate down to Paul Rogers, who's building us a power glide. He's going to work with dominator converters and they're going to work out the crank offsets and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we did speak about the flywheel with the trigger around it, so we've now got the flywheel that's sitting on the bench. Um, so like I said, when we send it all down, we'll send everyone to them guys. They're the experts. They'll be able to convert it with the offsets and make sure it's all happy. So we are getting close, uh, one step at a time. Okay, so that's a that's a wrap for this episode. It's pretty crazy looking at the, the Ferrari engine to the power glide, how small that glide is. So power glide obviously come out in the late 50s in the small block Chevs, and then we've got a supercar engine from the um, from the 2000s. So in proportion, it's just tiny. But the good thing about the power glides, they handle ridiculous power. So um, that's it for this episode. Next episode, I'll probably get these two in the car. Um, final checks on the main cross member, and we'll also get this engine and gearbox down to Rogers. So. Make sure you like, subscribe. One big thing also, thanks for everyone for the comments and thanks for the uh, other companies giving us support and ideas because the Ferrari engine is definitely new to us. So um, stay tuned. I appreciate all your help.